Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, February 6, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? There's a whole host of stuff on the docket. We're going to kind of get started a little bit backwards, go forwards, and then backwards again. But here's the situation. We'll take a look at the daily chart, what's jumping off the page, all that stuff. Let me just explain what's already on the screen, what you might be staring at, not paying attention to what I'm saying. So we have the downsloping trend line that comes from the weekly chart. And to reiterate, until they get or unless they get back below that trend line, then this is still a bullish situation in an uptrend. Back below the trend line changes the scope of that situation. Coming back for a test at some point is also normal garden variety market activity. What's the trend line running across the screen at 408.16? Well, the first thing I'll point out is this intersection here of 408.16, the downsloping trend line, and today's low, which happens to come in precisely at 408.10. We'll have to issue that of funny how that works. However, that wasn't the reason for 408.16. 408.16 was basically shouted from a megaphone before the opening bell. I posted it on Elon Musk's Twitter thing over there. If you don't know where that is in terms of my account, go underneath this video and in the description is a link to the Twitter thing. And then of course, we'll find it inside the numbers and in the live room where I took the trade along with the live members. Everybody inside the numbers took the trade. We took the trade at the price. We were patient. We took it together. We all made money together. That was the point of the juicy morning trade as indicated as the subject line in the email you received this morning. How you doing? Now let's back up to the daily chart. So what we have on our hands is a high And the high is just short of what we were looking for in terms of 420. Where does 420 come from? Well, when you go look at the long-term chart, you say, well, are they trying to run a back test or at least get above or spike through that monthly chart 20-period moving average? So 420 is an important place. Don't forget, we also have, and it's subjective as to where, but we have a range up here that the market has now run up to retest the higher end of the range. Higher is bullish, obviously, and promotes another leg higher. However, this is the top of the range, and it's, lo and behold, they found some area of overhead resistance. In addition to that on the daily chart, we're having a pullback in the midst of an uptrend. This is an uptrend. Until that's broken, you don't open the door for this downsloping trend line from the weekly chart. See how that works? X marks the spot. There is a variety of ways to look at the tape, and if you want to be a little more precise with that line, you could say there's one there, and you could also say, because this is part art form, part science, you could also say that there's one there. One opens the door to the next, and the next opens the door to the next a short study in trend line analysis. Here's an hourly chart. Where did the 408.16 come from today? It came from right there. It walks like a duck. It talks like a duck. It's generally a duck the majority of the time. What were they doing? They were coming back to run a test of the most recent breakout area in the sequence relative to where they were or below where they were in the pre-market, which was right around that area there. We were patient, we talked it through, and the low of day was 408.10. Let's have some fun with inside the numbers. I think you're going to find this interesting. I call this value. Zero Dark 30. Happy Monday. The overnight crew slash thieves have been busy We got a little decent pullback on our hands. Once below the most recent breakout area, where do they go? To the next one on the list. In this case, it's 408.16. So this is on the board at like 6.10 in the morning. I was looking at this the night before. Sunday night, 
I zeroed in. We know how these work. Sometimes they come up short, other times they spike them through. Here's what the thing looks like in picture format. So we had the area that you saw on the hourly chart identified. It's a breakout area. We circled it, so we started pounding the table early. We have to have some kind of a safety net. We have to know where we're wrong. So let's say they spike them through. Where's the next big time place? 407, they didn't go down there. We don't have to worry about it. And then we even had some more stuff for knowledge purposes. What would be the next real bona fide breakout area in the sequence? It would be Jerry's breakout. What's Jerry's breakout? It's the Fed FOMC announcement last Wednesday, right before the run-up to where we are now. That's Jerry's breakout. The idea is that you know everything you need to know as part of the pre-game warm-up routine. What else we got? Let's see what we got as the day starts to get underway. We got a lot of stuff before the opening bell, 9 o'clock. So what do we have in terms of a trade setup? We're going to talk duck theory. If it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, then it's a duck until it's not. 408.16 is the last breakout area in the sequence. If they're going to come up short on the first run down, they'll stop somewhere in the neighborhood of 408.65. How'd that work out? Here's a short-term chart right of the vertical as today's activity. From a very, very short-term perspective, First, it came up short, and I wiped it off the table. I explained it in the live room. But then if a trader wanted it, they gave you a three-point scalp, give or take, whatever it was. But then they came down to the other number. And then the trade looks like this on a five-minute chart. Much better. Spike the low by six cents, rip it back up in the other direction. Everybody gets paid accordingly. So what we did here, and you can read the notes and pause the video Go back to the chart to double check the work, but what we did is we created a zone between 408.16 and 407. Trader could buy twice in the zone, three times in the zone, the end of the zone, but 408.16 was the spot pounding the table bright and early. Now, what you'll see here in the notes is the guideline, the tour guide information type stuff, keeping everybody at bay up until. They come into the place. We know where the resistance is. It's up at 411. Everybody knows everything. Read the notes. Go back to the chart and double check the work. We had a trader in the room take the trade down. I said early on that a trader, as long as they stayed below 411, the door was going to be open for the spike down to or the run down to that 408 zone. We're moving along. Finally, they come into 408.65. They bounced. And then just a few minutes later, it's showtime for the Bulls to play defense for a bounce back. Starts as a scalp with potential. The scalp portion is over. I consider today the scalp portion about seven points. Patience pays. Nice trade. We had participants all over the place. Could be the morning low. It was, in fact, the morning low. So we want to hold for the never know. 409.15 is overhead resistance. And you can see here once again on the three-minute chart, they did stop there only for about 10 minutes, and then they continued up. Where to? And what you'll see in the notes is back to 410, 410 and a half, and then 411 right here. Above, there's another leg back to 410 and 410.50, and then you'll see 411 thing all over again right here. Read the notes, pause the video, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. We also know 409, give or take, is support. That's at about 12 p.m. noontime. Afternoon support. They hovered over it all afternoon, but it was still support nonetheless, which means the numbers work. We had a list of stocks on the move, but nothing hit its entry objective. Therefore, they're all off the board. But we had that nice, juicy, succulent SPY, ES, options trade. People take it, traders take it in a variety of different ways. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, they got far from home base. This is the first thing I see that popped out on the chart at me. Got far from home base on a breakout. 
and they're coming back to work off some of the excessive upside behavior, we'll call it, which only it's excessive if it happens in rapid fashion, which this one over three days, they had a nice big rally up. They're just coming back to run a test at some places. What's the obvious place? 190. I don't know that they get to 190, but that's an obvious place. Looking at some intraday stuff, you see this big breakup candle on this 120 chart? What's the low? How about 190? Funny how that works. Just so happens, that's Jerry's breakout. Funny how that one works too. Another thing for the puzzle piece thing on the table is relative weakness in the IWM against the SPY today. 1.4% in the red, SPY about one half of 1%. Relative weakness, my favorite market leading indicator, we move on. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Now, they were in the middle. We call this one a tweener, down about 1% in the middle of the S&P and the IWM. The progression of things is daily chart breakup candle low 15,161. After that, you look to the same routine we just discussed in the IWM. And that is this area here. You got a pivot. They broke out above it. If another one right here from a shorter basis, then that lines up with another breakup candle low. So you can see where this becomes another zone. And if the 20 period moving average, by the time price would creep up there, that would be another item creating what we call a full stack situation. All this stuff is taught in the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader, shameless plug. The Q people looks very similar to the S&P, couple of days down. They have yet to fill a gap over here, that's interesting. As a compare and contrast, you could see the gap was missed on Friday in the S&P, this gap over here, and when we go back to the Q people, you could see that we have yet to reach the gap from the gap higher into the second of last week. Do the Qs get to the gap, fill the gap at the same time? If there's any kind of downward pressure across all markets, do the Qs get there at the same time that the S&P gets to Jerry's breakout? Nothing burger day, which is relative strength for the financial market. They're in an uptrend above all the moving averages, and you know what that means. The trend is your friend. That goes for the other markets too. This is still a pullback in an uptrend. From a weekly chart perspective, they're still in the process of attempting to break out above this 100 period moving average. When you look at this on a weekly chart, they haven't got too far away from it yet, but they are above it. They closed above it for the second week in a row, and they started above it this week, and they remain above it. Back below, a different kind of thing may be developing, but as long as they stay above, That's your near-term bogey in the XLF. Smash Mouth looks the same as the Qs, looks the same as the S&P. They're in a pullback in an uptrend above all the moving averages. Where are they headed? Well, on this chart, here is a breakout area. This may hold. 240 is a fat round number. If it doesn't hold, I believe there's a gap down here. That would be a zone slash secondary place. Depending on when they got there, you might see the 20 period moving average right underneath price or at this price over here. And that would create the makings of, yes, once again, a full stack situation. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.